In this presentation we're going to look at the discounted cash flows and we're going to go over in a just summary overview of the six that we typically use in accounting courses and finance courses. And let's look, um, look at them on the next slide. But first I want to note that um, we have to be given the interest rate and the number of periods that we're looking at here then we can calculate these different cash flows. Here I'm showing uh, the Excel formulas for calculating out these cash flows. What I have here is going to just show you the formulas that you can build to make a, or you can build a table off these formulas here in Excel. So first uh, you put in the interest rate, the periods, and then these are calculated out automatically. So let's just go over them here. We'll scan through them so you can copy these formulas down if you want and put them in a little program. First, they got the future value and the present value. Then we got the future value of an ordinary annuity. Then the present value of an ordinary annuity. Then the future value of an annuity due. And then the present value of an annuity due. So you can build yourself a table here and the table I used is cell B3 was for the interest rate and cell B4 was for the number of periods. Okay. All right. Here we'll just look at the mechanics of using these discount factors. In this example we got a known amount out in the future here of $1,000. We have to determine the present value what it's worth in today's dollars. So uh, we determined here our or in this case a present value factor using an 8-5% interest rate for four periods. So we determined what that was and it was 0.8227 and we took that times the known future value here, $1,000. So we came up with $822. So that's what this $1,000 is worth now at the present. It's discounted back. Now all these formulas work the same so I'm just making showing one here for demonstration purposes. Here we'll go through a diagram for each one of these cash flows so we know what formula or table to use. In this first one here we've got a known present value and an unknown future value of a single sum lump sum out here. So we'd use a future value single sum formula or table down here we've got an unknown present value and a known future value of a lump sum. So in this case we'd use a present value of a single sum. Okay. Here we have an unknown present value and known payments or annuity. They're equal payments. Got four of them here. And they're at the end of the period receive them at the end of the period. Now that would be a present value of an annu ordinary annuity. Make sure you got that. Now here we've got an unknown future value and again we're receiving equal payments at the end of the period. They're unknown. In this case we'd use a future value of an ordinary annuity table or formula Here we've got an unknown present value and a known payments. They're equal payments again. We've got four of them here. But they're at the beginning of the period. We received the payments at the beginning of period and they're known. In this case we'd use a present value annuity due. So you get that, understand that. We use an annuity due when the payments are at the beginning of the period. And then here in the last one we've got an unknown future value and known payments at the beginning of the period again. Or known beginning of the period. In this case we'd use a future value of an annuity due. Remember that annuity due when they're at the beginning of the period the payments. Okay so we finished just an overview of the six basic ca cash flows that we use. So we'll move on here just to look how they can be 
um, tied together so we can figure out some uneven cash flows. So if you're working with uneven cash flows, you need a cash flow for each period. So in this case, I use I broke it down here. Periods one, I figured out what these cash flow discounted cash flow numbers would be two and two, three, and so on. So you really have to either put in your calculator and or use a little Excel program or a table and you have to look at each one individually individually as you'll see next. Here we're looking at an unknown present value and we've got a number of cash flows here they are irregular in amount and they have different time frames. So what you do is you discount each one of these back separately. In this case you'd use uh, the present value formula for discounting each one back separately and then you add the values together to get your present value, your unknown present value. Okay, here we're showing irregular cash flows, but we've got a number of them here on the plus side. So you have to discount each one of those back separately. And then we've got some here on the negative side. You got to discount each one of those back separately as well. Then you'll get uh, the discount value here for the, pre the present value of the plus ones and then the present value of the minus ones. So you add them together or subtract the minus from the plus here and then you'll get a uh, no one present value a summary of, or the sum value of these present values would be your no one present value and of course you'd do the same thing if you had an, a future value that was unknown out here you just do it in reverse direction here we've got an unknown present value and but we have a no one well, in this case, it's an ordinary annuity. We have separate payments here. So just use the ordinary annuity table. Or in case it was annuity due, you'd use the annuity due table and discount it back here to present value. And then we've got one uh, future value here that we know. We'd pres uh, discount that back uh, separately. And then you just lump those values together here and you get your known amount. Here we have a known present value and a known future value and we'd have to calculate the interest rate. So either you, you use a calculator or an Excel program or something on that, some device like that to calculate that.